Welcome to the Private Practice with Soul podcast. My name is Dr. Brooklyn Storm and I help private practice owners align their business back with their soul's calling, with their big vision and with their soul's purpose. Unlike other private practice coaches, I've traveled the world in search of spiritual resources, spiritual tools, education and information so that you can have the transformation that your soul desires and needs so that you can up-level your business. How much fun is this? I love it so much. Guys, if you're not already a member of the Private Practice Monthly Mentorship Group, please check out the show notes. I would love for you to be there. In the meantime, thank you so much for pushing play today. Let's begin. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast. I'm your host, as you know, <laughs> Dr. Brooklyn Storm. Thank you very much for listening to another episode. Welcome to the new subscribers. Uh, if you're new here, I hope you love it. Uh, feel free to go and listen to, you know, the back catalogue <laughs> uh, and have a look because there are nearly 280 episodes now. So I'm pretty confident if there's something that you're feeling a little bit challenged by in your private practice, I will have recorded something that can help you. Uh, and of course, thank you to all the loyal listeners that, um, you know, stick around. And I'm so pleased that you love this podcast and get some value out of it. What we're doing today is having a conversation uh, about something that came up in the Facebook group. So let me just minimize Garage Band for a moment. <laughs> and let me scroll back to uh, the topic that came up because it got quite a little bit bit of a debate going on there um oh of course my internet's going very slowly now isn't it so the question was uh something like can is it possible for a counselor to make one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year in private practice and you know what it was really interesting to watch some of the responses to that and i thought hmm and quite a few people sent me little messages um you know sort of on the side there with their own questions and queries about it so yes let's have a chat about whether or not it's actually possible and if so how do you do it uh okay here we go the question was Hi, ACPPO community. My apologies for the straightforward question, but I'm finding it hard to find answers on this issue. I've just completed uh, my qualifications and, you know, found my life's calling. Awesome. Long story short, I'm deciding whether or not to go ahead and complete a master's in counselling. My aim would be to do this and start a private practice soon afterwards. I need to get out of my current profession before I die inside forever. <laughs> I think we've all been there, haven't we? Uh, like everyone else, as I've gotten a little bit older, I've acquired new commitments, including children. And these commitments are expensive. I need to make approximately $125,000 gross per annum. Is this achievable working as a counsellor in your very own private practice? Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Uh, so this was such a great post. It's had a whole bunch of comments. And I think what I found really, really interesting was people seem to be on two sides of the fence about this. So there are some people that are saying, yes, of course you can. Um, and there are other people that are saying, definitely not. <laughs> and I think first off, it's really important to be respectful and mindful of everybody's journey. Okay. Um, you know, some of us didn't have coaching or mentoring when we were first starting out in business. So for those of us who didn't have that, it would have taken a lot longer to make that 125,000, okay? But I want to address some of the myths that are floating around out there because as somebody else shared with me, it's almost akin to like this mindset of learned helplessness. You know, I think so many times we're exposed and I know it's happened in that other big group of, of mine that I've taken over and I'm doing my level best to, to fix the narrative in there so that counsellors can actually start to embrace a new mindset and a new belief around what's possible for them. Um, that's a whole 
whole other story. But I want you to understand you get to decide how much you want to earn. Okay. Let me just go through some of the comments here and speak to them. So um, someone has shared that, yes, it's possible and you can do the maths and it will work for you. However, you may not consistently get those clients. And that depends on what you charge and what you'll specialize in. So you always have to be advertising. So <clears throat> what's my response to this? The, let's break it down. The first part, you may not consistently get those clients. Um, I disagree. I think that you can always attract the perfect for you client to your private practice. I know this to be true because I'm living proof of that. I do it myself. I bump my fees all the time. People who worked with me, you know, as recently as last year, um, paid one fee for some of my services and this year my services increased considerably and I haven't had a drop in the number of clients that I work with. So I disagree um, that you can't have a consistent flow of referrals. That's the first thing that I want you to understand. You get to charge whatever you want to charge and have a consistent flow of referrals. OK, that's the first thing that I want you to know and write that down in your journal. I get to choose how much I charge and receive a consistent and steady flow of referrals to my practice. Make it your wallpaper, print it off on Canva and, and stick it up on the wall behind the computer. Um, drum this into your mind. You get to charge, okay? Um, and you get to have that flow of referrals. Now, this person's also said, you know, it's going to depend on what you're specializing. Again, I disagree. I don't think there's an area of uh, specialization that's worth more or that can charge more than another. By definition, uh, a specialist is a specialist is a specialist. And in counseling, no one of us is worth more or more valuable um, than anybody else. Um, so I don't think a counselor that specializes in neurodivergent, you know, therapies or therapies for clients who are neurodivergent, I mean, uh, should charge any more or any less than someone who works with clients that have anxiety or depression. Again, you get to choose, okay, your area of expertise or specialization has nothing to do with how many clients you're going to get. And how steady that flow of um, referral referrals are. Okay. And now somebody said, you know, look, I don't need to make that much money. I don't even need to make close to what you're suggesting. Um, but obviously my bookings wouldn't always be full. Now I want to say, why are you saying obviously your bookings wouldn't always be full? Do you see how comments like that become beliefs and you and I both know that whatever we believe to be true, our brain is going to bring us evidence of, right? There is so much information out there in the world. We have 300 million bits of it coming to us through our senses every second and our brain can only process 2,000 bits and it does that by filtering information uh, based on what we want to see, what we need to know in order to survive. So if you're holding a belief that says, quote, obviously bookings won't always be full, end quote, uh, what's that going to do for your private practice? That's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So stop that thinking. Uh, if that's something you think that you'll never have, you know, um, bookings that won't always be full, get out your journal and you need to process that using the limiting beliefs um, process from a previous episode. But basically have a look at how that belief is supporting you in your practice, because I'll tell you, it is not. Okay. Um, uh, what else? So I'm just scrolling through the comments as we talk and I'm not naming anybody or anything like that. Um, somebody else is saying it's, it's, um, potentially possible you know to create that 125 it depends on your hourly rate your demographics and location NDIS pays well for counseling and sessions may be ongoing rather than one off 
Okay. I think, you know, there's absolute validity to this. It will depend on your hourly rate. I don't know really about uh, location though, because uh, we know in the world of counselling and with COVID, there's been a big swing to people doing online. And we know in the community, many people are familiar with the online space now. It's not as strange or unfamiliar as it was, you know, two or three years ago. So I'm not sure that location would prevent you from making 125000 I think how you sell your services, like how you um, talk, speaking to the value of doing an online or a phone service. Um, and yes, uh, this person's mentioning about NDIS. So in Australia, we have the National Disability Insurance Scheme uh, run by the government that, um, you know, helps accessing services uh, to be more, well, helps services to be more accessible I'm sorry for clients who may not otherwise be able to afford it and uh, it does this by allocating a certain amount of funds uh, to support a client to reach a particular goal maybe that goal is to reintegrate with the community or get a job or improve their well-being or their functioning or whatever it is uh, for a 12-month period so that's what this commenter is referring there to um, you know instead of seeing people one off and always having to find new clients um, with something like a scheme such as the NDIS you do have that safety net as a private practice owner of the possibility of being able to work with a client until that problem's resolved or until that goal's achieved okay I think this is just a side note here but I think there are perhaps a a small percentage of people that work within NDIS that maybe take advantage of that and I don't condone that I don't endorse that Um, but I do appreciate the value of somebody being able to get the help for as for as long as it's going to take for them to hit that goal or overcome that challenge um, somebody else was saying that when they're in private practice, they were looking at the possibility of working full time. They calculated that they needed to charge $180 per session and see 25 uh, clients per week. And in their opinion, that was very hard. So I'm not sure what was very hard about that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take a stab in the dark here and say perhaps um, what this commenter was suggesting might be hard for them would be uh, attracting those 25 or keeping them going. Somebody else uh, commented that "Hmm, that's a big stretch. I don't know any counsellors reaching that kind of income. And there are actually five people that gave this post a thumbs up. And the one before that said it's going to be very hard in in their opinion, that had seven thumbs up. So can you see this is this is something that needs to be broken down in our community because you are all capable of having that private practice, okay? But anyway, um, I think when we say I don't know counsellors reaching, I don't know any counsellors reaching that kind of income and saying things like that's a big stretch, I think comments like that feed into the narrative that we can't, Um, it's not achievable and if we do achieve it, it's not sustainable. And I don't think comments like that are very empowering. Um, I appreciate comments like that are true for the people that write them. But I'm here to show you what's possible and to break down that narrative, okay? Somebody else has said, well, do you know what? There's lots of factors to consider. Plus, you need experience in practice to find out what kind of FaceTime hours you can manage. For example, you can project for 30 clients a week, but that's huge. I find my sweet spot is about 15 a week. My advice, consider burnout before your earnings. They go on to say your niche, other similar services, demographic, business costs of running, i.g., i.e., the rent will also impact greatly on what you can earn. I think you'd need in capital letters a lot of experience under your belt before you can competitively charge high fees to reach this target. And what worried me about this post was that 10 people agreed. Um, Again, I think there's, you know, we could unpack this uh, comment a little bit. I disagree that, um, you know, your... uh, other similar services, your demographic, etc., is going to impact greatly on what you earn. I I disagree with that totally. I think your niche 
um, determines absolutely what you can earn. One of the mistakes or, or problems that I see is counsellors setting up practice and advertising or marketing out of fear mindset and not being able to uh, resonate with anybody. And so they do struggle. But a niche sets you apart. It makes you identifiable. It makes you easy to refer to. Having a niche is the golden ticket to you being able to get referrals, um, irrespective of whether or not there are similar services and irrespective of the demographic you're working in. As you all know, I worked in two really low, so famously low socioeconomic areas. I still had nearly a million dollar practice at the time. So high um, six figures. Uh, and yeah, this was in Frankston and Hastings, you know, and this was with huge running costs. Uh, I think running costs need to be taken into consideration. But when we're talking about gross annual turnover uh, and what the target is, you can absolutely easily, easily, easily hit that 125k. Easy. Um, and then this person goes on to say, I think you'd need in capital letters a lot of experience before you can charge high fees. Now, this is this person's belief and that's okay. This person's absolutely allowed to have that belief. What worries me is that 10 people are agreeing with them. Um, and this belief is holding people back from doing the work and from achieving the turnover that they want to achieve, okay? Now, I recently ran a poll in the ACPPO asking people, you know, I think it was about what's most important to them or, oh, no, no, how do they measure success? And um, the two great big, uh, well, what was it? What The ones that got the most votes in the poll were seeing the right number of clients per week, which upon unpacking that further with people was making the money they needed to make. And the, the second one was um, supporting clients to exit their services because they felt much better. Now, um, money is part of running business. If we are not mindful of the money, we're going to um, have a very hard time of being business. You, you, If you're not going to look at money, you need to be in a charity or you need to just do this as a hobby and have a regular job. But if you're in private practice, you're in business and you need to look at the money. By you saying things to yourself like you need a lot in capital letters of experience under your belt before you can charge high fees, you are holding yourself back. There is no association between qualification and how much to charge. There is no association between uh, your level of experience and how much to charge. What you charge is up to you. You get to choose that based on what aligns with you. And you have to think also about uh, your money mindset and your beliefs around money. And if you're going to have a belief that, you know, that goes along the formula of if this, then that, if I get more experience, then I can charge the fee that's right for me. We need to unpack that because you are not ever going to hit what's possible for you. This type of thinking is limiting thinking. Um, what I would rather you do is maybe take out your journal and, you know, write this out, um, you know, about a lot of experience under your belt before you can competitively charge high fees. Write that out and reflect on what that means to you um, and think about whether that feels right for you. Somebody else has, has said uh, burnout is a real issue and that's so true and we have to be mindful of that. The last thing that we want is for counsellors to be seen to be working with a high volume of clients in order to hit their targets just because other people are saying you're not experienced enough to charge the fee that you need to charge. All right, don't listen to those people or you will start to head down the path of burnout. What's worse, hey? Charging the right fee or you burning out and not being able to help people that really need you. Okay. Um, yep. Somebody else was saying, what else? Uh, how many, yeah, think about how many clients you want to see per week and the bare minimum. 
Uh, that's really important because we need to understand their ebbs and flows in our industry. And that's entirely true. You know, I've done episodes for us before on the podcast. I like to look at it as seasons, you, you know, in your private practice. There will always be ebb and flow, especially if you don't have um, those masculine business structures in place. That's going to be really, 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 really difficult for you to navigate and manage. Um, when it's quiet, I can tell who's got a good system in place and who doesn't because the ones who don't are scrambling for referrals and they default into more of the doing and they start jumping into the group saying, I don't have any clients. Where are the clients? Is anybody else experiencing this? Da, 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 da. Whereas the clients that I work with um, in, in coaching or mentoring and, and some in supervision, uh, they've got plans and structures in place. So they're never those people that are scrambling. Okay. So what I want you to know is you can have ebb and flow, they will happen, but you can absolutely minimize um, the, what do I want to say? You know how it can be so high and so low? You can you can minimize that level of high and low. Um, and you can do that. Uh, okay, somebody else has said, um, if you're doing just counseling, I doubt it, meaning being able to generate 125k but if you're employed part-time in the industry and you have other streams of income uh, then it will be more achievable here I disagree again I think we've got some uh, limited thinking going on and I'm not sure where that thinking is coming from as I said it's just a comment on the page I haven't had a conversation with this person but um, my guess is perhaps this is just another example of how that unhelpful narrative has been permeating the counseling community and it's highlighting the work I need to do in order to um, correct this so that people can be doing more of the work that they'll put on this earth to do. Another person suggested, hey, you need something beyond the hourly rates like selling online self-help or, or psycho-ed courses consistently to make up the extra money. One-on-one -on -one time alone is not a highly profitable business model. Um, okay, and people are agreeing with that too. So let me speak to this. I think what this person is saying is, he, I think this person's talking about scaling. And here's what I want you to know. There's no need for you to scale yet, okay? You can scale after you make the 125K. Now, this post was about, is it possible to make 125K as a counsellor in private practice? The answer is absolutely yes. You can achieve it doing one-to-one -one work without burning out. I think what this commenter was um, alluding to, though, was scaling. And scaling is something for another podcast, but scaling is when you are almost at capacity with your one-to-one. -one. You don't want to have a waiting list, for example, and you want to have a couple of, um, you want to move from a one-to-one -to, -one to a one-to-many model so that you can help more people. Um, and also talking about maybe developing some extra revenue uh, streams to support the practice. You do not require those in order to hit the target of 125K though. Going down that path is only going to put you under more pressure and create more work for you, okay? So I don't think you need to do that yet. Scaling is something for, for down the track when you're at capacity with your one-to-one. -one. Uh, somebody else was saying, you know, um, they're considering the same. However, the startup costs are high and would take a while to establish any new small business, regardless of specialization, especially for a services consulting business. Again, I haven't had an opportunity to unpack these comments, but I just want to um, comment here uh, on the podcast and say that, you know, is it true that startup costs are high? I think it depends on how you define high. High is very subjective. I mean, high to me might be different to high to you. I can share. Um, there are so many ways that you can get started. You can go and rent a room for 20 bucks an hour or a hundred dollars a day or whatever it is. That's not much, especially when, you know, it's, the, it's more than covered by the cost of your first client. 
uh, a psychology today profiles free you know for six months and if you refer someone you get another six months free so you know websites you can do yourself I did mine uh, on GoDaddy super affordable do you know what I mean so if you think that if you have an expectation that your startup costs are going to be high, what will happen is you'll play safe, you'll play small, you'll stay in limbo when you're not going to take the action that you need to take in order to hit that 125K. And I want you to be able to do that. So we need to have a growth mindset here. Okay. And it doesn't necessarily take a while to establish a counseling practice. In fact, just yesterday, I was talking to a beautiful soul um, who, you know, she's almost filled up her diary and she's only been open for four weeks. <laughs> so again, please stop listening to what other people are saying. Your experience is going to be unique to you, okay? Um, and instead of adopting the mentality and, and the learned helplessness of all these reasons why you can't do something based on what everybody else is telling you you can't do something. Instead, I want you to ask yourself expansive questions, right? So where where this comment says it's going to take a while to establish a business, you know, blah, 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 and the costs are going to be high, I want you to journal out on that. How many ways does this get to be easy? How many ways does this get to be affordable? How many ways does this um, do I get to fill my diary before I even open the doors? See what I mean? There's such a difference in mindset. This is what I want you to know. You can do it. Uh, somebody else is saying, um, hi, there are others here with more experience, but I'd say no, it's not possible um, unless you employed other counsellors in your practice. Okay, I mean, I don't, I don't even think I need to. Well, I will say something to that. Again, we've got... A mindset here that you can almost feel the energy coming off this it's very constricting it's very restrictive okay it's not expansive it's not open you know like I feel my body just kind of folding in on itself when when I read that to to seem black and white somebody saying I don't think it's possible and here's here's why um you know it, it's yeah, it, it's a problem and the maths isn't exactly, uh, you know, great either. Um, yeah, I think you, you need to understand that, again, somebody, I'm just continuing on with the comment, they're saying, again, you, of course, you could charge 200 a session, but finding yourself fully booked uh, 100% of the time with that fee and no rebate might be tricky. Um you know, again, this is just somebody's somebody's perception and you can't argue with that. And I 100% respect that this is somebody's opinion. My opinion's different. I think, as, as I've said, you can absolutely charge what you want and be booked. Um, I don't know if you'd be booked 100% of the time, but she's saying 100% of the time with that fee <laughs> and then put in brackets and no rebate. Here again, we've got that whole mentality coming through of the I have to have a rebate in order to be fully booked and attract the right clients and you know where I where I stand on that whole other issue we're going to talk about that in the next episode um, but she does finish off by saying it's not the money that's the barrier it's the caseload you can manage without burnout um, such a valid point again we don't want anybody burning out um, I don't believe it's the caseload I believe it's your ability to create a model of private practice that's unique to you that's going to work for you okay I have somebody else saying I com it's completely achievable if you believe it is allow yourself to think outside the box um, you know take serious drive keep riding that wave yep um Oh, what else? Somebody else was saying um, a couple of things that have 
been of note since transitioning from paid employment to private practice are um, having to manage the superannuation. So in Australia, we have superannuation. In America, I think it's called your 401k. Um, So when you're in private practice, uh, you have to manage that, of course. Uh, If you have an accountant or a bookkeeper on board before you start your private practice, they will show you how to set that up. So you don't have to worry about... um, you know, making sure you put it away and things like that. Um, they're saying holidays. When I don't work, I don't get paid. Um, yep. And so I need to forecast my income to factor that in. Again, this is a conversation you want to have with your bookkeeper or your accountant. When you work in private practice, you want to understand how many weeks off you're going to have Add on to that your public holidays and add a week or two for your sick. That's going to help you determine your uh, fee to charge, okay? GST um, and all that entails once you reach the threshold, da-da-da, I don't know what they're talking about there. GST isn't an expense for us. We collect GST on behalf of the government and then we give it to the government so I don't know how that's a how that's an issue like if my fee is $300 which it is for some of my services I have to charge $30 GST and then hand that $30 on to the government um, every quarter that's not an expense for me that's not even factored into my expenses I don't have to come up with that money I'm just collecting it and passing it on um Okay, I'm just looking down. Somebody else said it's achievable if you put in the hard yards. Congratulations on finding your calling and wishing you the best of luck. That's beautiful. But again, I guess I disagree with the hard yards. I I believe in um, alignment and I believe that if you harmonize the masculine and the feminine energy, you get to work in flow. Um, and that's what I mean by create a private practice with soul. You you get to have a private practice that feels comfortable, inspiring, and that actually energizes you. And that's what I teach people how to do every single day in my one-to-ones. So I think this is a really supportive comment apart from the hard jobs. <laughs> um, somebody else says, yes, it's 100% achievable. I set mine up two years ago and earn more than what your required amount is. Um, Yep. And she shares her model there um, doing some EAP work. However, she does work six days a week. Um, I checked back in with the OP, the original poster, and just said, how are you feeling about things now? You know, now that there was all this feedback and and all this insight and and they've said, yeah, I feel great. Thank you. I'm going to finish the master's off and change careers based on this info. Thanks. So that's good. Um, Okay. Somebody else said, yes, you can achieve that 125K. And then they've said, but it is hard and the hours are long to reach that not true that's just not true it's true for some people but it I guess what I want you to know is it doesn't have to be hard and the hours do not have to be long those are not requirements you do not have to work harder and longer to make what you want to make in your private practice okay they've then gone on to say so you need to be prepared for that I disagree 100 percent uh, overheads are also substantial. I disagree. I think when you're just starting out, you absolutely get to start out on a shoestring budget. Um, I know many of us work entirely online, for example, when we're getting ready to start our private practice and then we move into face to face as we build up some capital behind us. Um they're going on about the the next part of the comment is about how you need to be um, GST registered and that 10% per hour is essentially tax. Again, that's not true. You're just collecting that on behalf of the government and giving it to the government. That costs nothing to the practice. Um, do, 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 do. Somebody else has said on a traditional counselling rate with a, I don't know what a traditional counselling rate is, by the way, but this person's saying on a traditional counselling rate with a charge per session model, it would be challenging to make that 
and emotionally draining. Oh my goodness, no. It doesn't have to be that way at all. You get to create a practice, everyone, that is energizing, not emotionally draining. You get to create a practice like, oh, I've got this amazing practice. My clients have these amazing practices where they feel energized and lit up and they're bouncing throughout the day. You know, I had a client on Monday say to me, thank gosh, it's Monday. I'm so excited we get to be here again and do this. (sighs) Okay. Um, They're talking about um, doing some other work that complements the the counseling to try and build up their income. Okay, Uh, and then the last one that we've got here, there are so many options to this. I'm just setting up my practice and my rates are this and that. Out of that, my primary costs are this, that, that, that. Um, I'm just trying to skim it while I'm on the phone to you. Not on the phone to you, sorry, while I'm on the podcast. Um, Yeah. Uh, anyway, so what I want you to, what I'm taking away from this is there is still a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding about how you create a successful private practice. And that is why I do the work that I do, um, because I want you to see like what you're thinking and what you're perceiving is going to determine your experience in business. Okay, and I want you to understand that, you know, beliefs can be worked through. You know that just like I do. In fact, you and I help our clients change their beliefs every single day. But until you're willing to change your beliefs, right, which is a huge thing to ask, um, but you have to be willing to change your beliefs. If you're somebody who says, you know, it's going to be long hours and a lot of hard work, if that's sincerely your belief and you're not willing to change that well I can't help you (laughs) Um, if you're not open to hearing new ways I can't help you and the reality is you may struggle to hit that 125k if you do want to hit the 125k it's more than doable Um, and I know this to be true like as I was sharing with you um, a moment ago I was speaking to somebody this week who she's been in business four weeks she's fully booked she's on track to make in excess of 125k and we're putting all the structures behind her to support her in doing that Okay, Um, there's another lady that I worked with. She was transitioning from psychology. She was inspired by my path about leaving psychology and pursuing counseling. So uh, we were able to support her and she's now retired from psychology, just like I did, to a fully booked diary. And she's on track to make 400K this year. So, and guess what? She's working half the time that she was on Medicare. Anyway. I want you to understand that absolutely is possible. I think to help you um, see what's possible so that you can feel hopeful, um, what I'm going to do is start sharing with you maybe some more stories about people who are where you or who were where you are now so that you can see what they did and how they did it. Uh, in order to create those six-figure practices. Now, I know, I know, I know there are people that say, oh, it's not about the money. I understand there are some of you that are saying it's not about the money. My job, though, as a private practice business coach is to do the business coaching. And when you're running a business, it is about the money. And we can see that from this post here, okay? Anyway, uh, the takeaway for you today is I want you to sit down and with your journal, write out what you believe to be true about creating a six-figure practice. And I want you to set a timer for three minutes and I want you just to brain dump onto the page everything you believe to be true about creating a six-figure practice, okay? The good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. When you've done that, and you've run out of things to say, I want you to sit with it for until you can come up with another three things that you believe to be true about creating a six-figure practice. When you have done that, I want you to take a photo of it and email it to me because if you want help, 
I can absolutely help you with it. We can jump on a quick call and I can help you with that or I can send you an email back and give you some guidance around it, okay? And we can go from there. This is an interactive podcast, so to speak. I'm always here. Um, I'm always happy to help you. And I want you to see because I love you so much. I value the work that you do so much. And I want you to um, be able to um, serve the community in a way that feels right for you uh, and in a way that they need. And you're not going to do that unless we start to open our minds to what's possible and start to play with the energy of what's possible. Let's together change the narrative so that as a profession, we can change um, the awareness about what we do in the community, change the awareness of our value in the community, change the awareness of how we help in the community. Okay. All right. Um, and yes, and let's support each other on this journey. It's so powerful and it's so big. And I love being here with you to support you on it. So I hope this was um, an empowering episode. I hope it was super helpful. Um, and I'm going to let you go now. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for listening. If you have a podcast topic you would like me to share or speak into, of course, just send me a little email and I'll do that for you as well. Or connect with me in the Facebook group. Okay, have a wonderful Saturday, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast today. If you're looking for clarity, if you need help with branding, your processes and bringing everything into alignment with your soul's purpose for your private practice, head to the show notes and click the link for more information about the Private Practice Monthly Mentorship Group. You are going to love it. I can't wait to see you in there. Thanks so much for listening. Bye.